Let's come behind the scenes. Let's talk about systems. I'm gonna walk you through a real wedding production schedule. Hey flower fam, welcome back to this week's YouTube video. My name is Kathleen, and if this is your first time joining us here, welcome to the secret corner of the interwebs. <laughs> when we talk about all things marketing money and managing your mindset, specifically for floral designers, flower lovers, and farmer florists, or basically anybody who's on a mission to build a profitable and thriving flower business. Let's talk about the ins and outs of the production side of things, what goes on behind the scenes in terms of wedding flower preparation. And one of the reasons I wanted to go through this is because my very first like instances in doing wedding flowers, I was under the impression that I had to do everything as last minute as possible. So I would literally like finish work at the shop on a Friday night and then I would start doing wedding work. It led to so many <laughs> late nights and so much like last minute rushing and panic until like fast forward a few years <laughs> and somebody very rightly told me, hey Kathleen, flowers in a bucket and flowers in a centerpiece are the same. So we can actually break down a production schedule and start way sooner than I first thought when I was learning how to design and manage the back end of things. Your production schedule can be set up in such a way that it isn't all of this completely last minute stuff. And in actual fact, now this many years into doing wedding work, I actually really build in a lot of buffer time, a lot of planning time so that things aren't done at the last minute. But I will absolutely include a link to an example production schedule. Your schedule might be slightly different because it's going to depend on when you get your flowers in, how much work you want to do in terms of prep beforehand. So just use this as a guide, as a place to start and know that building a system, building a production schedule that works to allow you to create the work that you want to create is invaluable in your business. And tip number one is to actually make a schedule. Now I used to think, oh, I just want to be inspired. I just want to stand at the workbench and do what I want to do. For me, I found that actually caused a huge amount of stress and I love systems and processes and I love being able to free up all of that thinking power to then pour into my creativity. So when we started to create actual production schedules as in this is when we're going to prep things, this is when we're going to pick up the flowers, this is when we're going to make this, this is when we're going to make this everything changed in our business and it felt like we were so much more under control and anytime i had to have freelancers coming in to help us then we could easily communicate and share with them the schedule that needs to happen so i will if we have a sunday i should say a saturday wedding sunday is the day that we clean everything up and we get everything restocked so then saturday night is about the pack down or the bump out saturday afternoon is about the reception setup ceremony setup bridal delivery happens before that Saturday morning, we make time to actually finish our bouquets, actually take some photos, pack the van, etc., etc., etc. My personal preference is to work from the end backwards because I find it requires me to put a slightly different thinking and perspective on things and I am very rarely ever then overlooking things. And I love thinking about that point when you are finished. <laughs> the wedding, right? The candles are clean, everything's put away, all of your containers are nicely organized. From that point, I work backwards. And know that the first time that you create your schedule is gonna take you the longest. The next time you then have a wedding or event, you just open your previous schedule, save as, and adjust things as needed. So creating a schedule has been an absolute game changer for us in terms of being able to more effortlessly navigate weddings and navigate multi-wedding weekends. And tip number two is to actually start early. You don't have to wait until you get all of your flowers in your studio or in your shop for that weekend's wedding to then start actually thinking about that weekend's wedding. But there's going to be things like prepping the containers, getting dinner sorted. If you're anything like me and you love making your boutonnieres and your corsages out of dried elements, then you can actually start doing that a few days ahead of time pulling your ribbons, pulling all of your branding, all of your wrapping, getting those things sorted, making sure that the car is filled with petrol, making sure that you've got your freelancers sorted, 
everybody's on schedule, all that stuff can all happen well before you even get your flowers into the studio. And you're gonna love the fact that you've thought about these things ahead of schedule. Otherwise, it's just adding to the stress of having to navigate those days. Once you've completed your production schedule, go through and highlight the things that you know you can get done ahead of time. Things that aren't time sensitive, things that don't have that kind of short shelf life that many of our flowers need to be thought through. Anything that you know that you can do ahead of time is going to save you just that little bit of stress on the day. And the more organized you are going into the production schedule, I have found the better the design experience and the happier you are with the output. I know that that sounds crazy, <laughs> but the more that we've started to plan things, the more that we've started to really have a set production schedule, the more specific we are with our timing, the more specific we are with the ins and outs of what's gonna happen on the day, the more we can be in the moment when we're actually designing and fully just pouring all of our intention and all of our thinking and all of our energy into the design. As opposed to what used to happen with me and at the table, creating a bridal bouquet or creating a centerpiece and I'd be like, oh, I need to remember to do this. Oh, and I need to remember to do that, right? It's like, that is just so distracting and I was never happy with the end result. Anything you can get off of that schedule early on, get it done. You'll be so much happier when you're in the midst of designing that you've got all those little details sorted. And then tip number three is take notes. Here's the thing. No event is ever going to run smoothly. It's like make a plan, follow the plan, throw the plan out. <laughs> things are always going to come up, right? But the more organized you are, the more you've thought things through, the less of a surprise some of these incidences will be. And one of the greatest things that we started doing really early on in our business was taking even just that short drive home or the long drive home, whatever's happening on the day that you have finished the setup, have a quick powwow with your team. If your dad was helping you set up, you can also just do this have a meeting with yourself and ask yourself, what are three things that went really well? There's always gonna be things that you can take a moment to be really proud of that you really wanna build on for next time. And then three things you wanna change or three things you do differently next time. There will always be things that you want to improve, things that you want to make better, things that you, oh, I should have done it this way instead of that way, or oh, we should have brought this thing instead of that thing. Oh, I should have made this ahead of schedule whatever it is, even after having done hundreds of weddings, I was like, oh, next time we could do this. Next time we could do that. Every single time that you do an event, every single time that you do a wedding, it just keeps getting better and better and better. And that becomes your new baseline that you're always improving on. There's always room for improvement. My friends, it doesn't ever need to be a finished product. And the general timeline that we would use for an example, Saturday wedding, would be we would go to the market to the wholesaler on a Wednesday when our wholesalers are actually open. We'd then come back and process and prep all of our flowers. We'd have a quick kind of divide up into general areas of the event just to make sure that our colors feel right, that we don't feel like anything's missing. Just give it that kind of sense check. Then Thursday, we would do table arrangements, table flowers, anything table related, create a production line, make it happen. We would then not even put those into a cooler. We'd actually just put them into a cool, dark place. For me, I have found that the darkness impacts the shelf life of the flowers more than anything else. And we actually want the flowers to open up and be beautiful for a Saturday. So table arrangements Thursday and then Friday, we would do our first edit of our bouquets. And when I mean first edit, we actually build into our production schedule time on Saturday morning to go back, judge and fix things. I used to put the weight of the world on my shoulders thinking I need to just be able to magically pick up this collection of flowers and make it beautiful for the bride. It felt like way too much pressure for me. So we actually break it down into multiple steps and we just build that into our schedule. I actually learned this when I was thinking about how creatives and writers approach their process. They do a crappy first draft and then they make time to edit it. I make a first bouquet. I don't have to be totally satisfied with it, but I make time the next day to come back and edit it. So just build that into your production process if that's something that might work for you. Then on Friday, we'll do the rest of our personals and wiring cake flowers, whatever needs to happen. Then we'll prep everything, make sure we've got everything organized for installations as well. Saturday morning, we wake up. We get back into the studio, we do our bouquets, we make sure everything's packaged beautifully, we make sure everything is in the van, pulled together. We actually build in time in our production schedule for taking photos and doing a little behind the scenes for Instagram. 
I never used to have enough time to make that happen until I realized you just build it into the schedule. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but you literally build it into the schedule. So then we'll do personals, deliveries, ceremony setup, perception setup, etc., etc. Okay, my friends, as I said, I'll link the PDF below. Go out there and make it your own, right? And remember, you get to adjust it based on your design preferences, timing preferences, how much work you want to get done ahead of time, when the actual event is, the ingredients that you're using. Everybody's schedule gets to be slightly different and you get to go out there and make this one your own. Just remember, there's always gonna be room for improvement, always something that you can be making better.